Hey everybody. Today Rado talks through Dragonfire Sea of Swords, which is the latest adventure pack. And for Dragonfire fans who have been following along, the previous adventure pack, Chaos and the Troll Claws, kind of ended with a, well, I thought, a bit of a cliffhanger. This picks up right where the last one left off, and I'm going to show you what you get in here, because there is some very neat new stuff. So let's open her up. And... Alrighty, we'll come back to all the rules and stuff. Let's talk about the cards first, since Dragonfire is, after all, a deck builder. All right, well, you're going to get some new artifacts. I'm not going to talk about them. If you want, you can just go on ahead and pause and take a look. As always, they have the cool, shiny effect on them that is just so awesome. And... Oh, let's see, oh, how many more? Oh, Cutlass, of course, because of High Seas Adventures. And there we go. Oh, yeah, and this one which I certainly hope someday to be able to get some rares, but uh, we're not that far along yet. But anyway, so you've got some new artifacts. And then you have got some new enemy cards. And the interesting thing is, we have an entirely new type of environment, the coast. You may remember, if you ever looked at the uh, last page of your manual, it talks about, hey, look at all these different environments. What's this coastal environment that we've been hearing so much about? Here it is, folks. We finally reached the coast. And, of course, there are level 1 and level 2, or normal and advanced cards. Now, interestingly, there are 15 of each, as I recall, 15 level 1s and 15 level 2s, which is a little bit less than the basics for the Wilderness Adventures, I think, which were 20 and 20. But still, that's enough that, you know, even if you're not playing the main adventure of Sea of Swords and you just want to do a dungeon crawl, well, hey, instead of going through the wilderness or a dungeon, you can have dungeon crawls along the sea coast where you will come across all kinds of things. There's a couple of environments, the old shark pen, and again, if you like, you can go on ahead and pause to take a longer look at what these things offer. And I'm just going to go through them really quick. Go ahead and pause if you like. All righty. I think you can see this. Now one thing, I, there are some actually very, very interesting uh, creatures in here. Uh, and also some repeats. Sorry about that. I should have sorted these ahead of time. And if there's one thing that I would think defines the feel, oh, here we are into the level twos. A couple more uh, environments or locations in the level two, the hunting grounds and the whirlpool. If there's one thing that defines these new types of encounters, lots and lots of tokens, including, I believe, for the first time ever, I could be wrong about this, but I don't think we have ever had multicolor tokens before, which means the tokens in this expansion are tougher than we've ever dealt with. And there's a lot of them. The majority of the in creatures and encounters and whatnot feature tokens. Now, you're going to be going up against a lot of them, and you might think, ah, lots of tokens. Does the game do something to help out with that? Yes, it does. And I will show you what it is. Although, actually, oh, wait, there's one more thing. If uh, you were pausing and looking at these, there's one I remember that you probably won't know. What does that mean? Because there's a new function on one of the locations. Where is it? Ah, yes. This level one, shipwrecked. If you get shipwrecked, uh, shipwrecked, you get trapped. And what that means is um, you cannot get off of here. You cannot move away from a shipwreck, unlike regular locations. And now that's okay because of the effect of this shipwreck, uh, but there's a reason you're trapped there. Anyway, so... Bunch of new uh, uh, character or encounters for the coastal set, uh, 30 in total, 15 and 15. Cool. And then on top of that, we've got some new Dragonfire cards, uh, including the, you know, whenever you see an X card, that means it's one that's only to be used um, in the given adventure that came with this expansion pack. And not surprisingly, hey, it's more to do with tokens. The sea strengthens her own. So, like I said, this is a token crazy pack. And uh, you do have something to deal with that. I'll show you in a second when I get there. It's at the bottom of this stack. I probably should have started sooner. Okay, and then like before, you get some alternate art, this time for grace cards. So, if you're sick and tired of looking at your regular greens, here's an alternate bit of art. And now, like previous adventure packs, a one of the classes gets some love. This time, it's the Druids. You got this Lesser Restoration card, which you can only add if you've got a Druid in your party, but it is awesome. Once you get it out, um, doing devotion checks for a heal every single round. I'm sorry, I, that's just... 
that's madness. Um, or you know, doing every single turn. C absolutely crazy uh, if you build your deck right. So anyway, so you've got this love for druids, and you've got veteran of the sea. Now this is a funky new card. Again, you would only use it if you're playing in the Sea of Swords specific adventure instead of just like a regular dungeon crawl. And the way this works is you take a number of these equal to the number of players. So in a two-player game, you take two of them, and you shuffle them into the top half of the market deck. So you will see these sooner than later, or you know, three or four or five or six, depending on how many players. And as you can see, these things will help out quite a bit with uh, tokens if they're multicolored tokens. You know, I mean, if you're used to all the regular tokens, just, oh, I can use colorless damage just to knock out all these zombies or whatever, the tokens in the high seas, they are very scary, which is why you need to get a veteran of the sea on your side to have a shot. And I think it's really interesting, the notion that you shuffle these into the top half of the deck so that you don't get quite so uh, blown away by, oh, you know, all the stuff I really need was at the buried at the very, very bottom. But anyway, so, veteran of the sea. That's a run-through of all the new cards you get. But now, let's talk about the big stuff. Uh, like before, you get two new characters. Like I said, this is Druid-centric. So, we have got a Gold Dwarf Druid. Looking very cool. If uh, this is your dream character, finally. And then these Tieflings? Is that what they're called? Yeah, the Tiefling Druid? who have their Infernal Legacy, so uh, another new combination of stuff if you were thinking about branching into Druids, and you might want to now that there's that new Druid card available. And uh, so that's all very, very nice. And then, of course, stickers devoted. In case you didn't have the full expansion here, you know, the Heroes of the Coast, here, or, yeah, here, the Heroes expansion, here's a bunch of stickers all about Druid upgrades if this is your first introduction to Druids. So that's to be expected as well. But here's where things get interesting. So we've got a rule book for the expansion that describes, well, first of all, it describes what the, the new trap keyword is and how you mix and match things and all that and how milestones work, which I've talked about in previous uh, talk-throughs of this. And, of course, the storyline that continues on from the Troll Clause. If you want, you can pause and read that. But I am not going to reveal the end in case you make it. All you got to know is you need to prepare for battle on the high seas. Because the new adventure, this is probably the craziest, most complex adventure for really Dragonfire or Shadowrun Crossfire. I've never seen anything quite like it because it comes with a board. Yes, folks, we're on the high seas. The name of our ship is the Sword Mistress. And when we start out, we are all on the ship. Let's say, you know, this is me and this is Jen. We start out on port or starboard. Um, and where we're standing on the ship has a really, really big impact. Now, here's the way the game works. This is the, uh, the Sea of Swords adventure, which starts out for level 3. So level 1s and level 2s need not apply. Uh, basically, it's a it's the standard st structure where you have to make it through three scenes. You gotta survive to the end. But you have to do some other stuff as well. And the first difference you'll notice is, hey, it's uh, the number of characters plus one, plus two, plus three. So that's a little bit heavier than normal. But here's the interesting thing. So let's say I've got no dragon fire, and so we're gonna have to have some, you know, I'm gonna you know, playing a two-player game. We're gonna have to have three characters. Hit us. Let's go on and have him hit us. They come out. Let's see. So we've got a red. It comes over here to the aft port because that's the red section. And then we draw another red. So two giant eagles from aft port. And finally, uh, the, the Shogun Baron is up here on the fore port. So, these creatures do not jump on players right away. Instead, they jump onto sections of the ship that match their color. That will always happen. It's not the whole, oh, just the first color matters and then they just get shuffled out. They always go to specific spots. And become to the, because they come to these spots, they do not attack us. At the beginning, um, unless we do something about it, they're directly attacking the crew. At the beginning of this adventure, the ship has 15 crew and its keel has 15 strength. You know, the hull the, the hull of the ship can take 15 damage, and uh, there's 15 damage that can be um, th thrown towards the crew. And here's the deal. If we just stay here on the bridge, kind of in the center of the ship, they'll never hit us. Every time they get to attack, they will do their 1, 2, 3, um, 4, 5 damage to take out the crew. And, as you might imagine, if the ship runs out of crew, it's game over. Although, it's interesting. At the beginning of the scene, when the bad guys first come out, 
on that round, they are not going to attack. What am I talking about here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they are not going to attack. So the crew gets one breather, but after the second round that they come out, they're going to start ripping them up. And that's why at the beginning of our turns, we can move from any location to any other location we want on the ship. The same way you can move between locations in the regular game, um, we could both move down here to the aft port if we want. Now, and then, and then your turn continues like normal. Whenever you move into a location, that has bad guys, you have to pick up at least one of them. Although you can pick up more. And uh, that means they will move from attacking the ship over to be in front of your character card like normal, and they'll just start attacking you. Um, and so, like, yo, know, I might run over here and grab the giant eagle uh, or gen might, and then I might come over here and get the griffin pride. And that means next round, since neither of us got this, this guy is going to be attacking the crew directly until one of us moves over here, at which point he will jump one of us, and then the crew is safe. Now, the interesting thing is, we could say, hey, you know what, let's let the crew take care of them. Let's not run over and uh, take any damage at all, because even though we're not directly next to these guys, we can still attack them. It's just like the regular game where if you're in the same location, because we're all considered to be in the same location. Even though there's these little sub-locations, we're all in the ship. So even though I'm stand even if we were both standing over here, we could attack these guys on our turn or you know, on another player's turn using assist, uh, because this is all considered to be one location. It's only if we move over here that we'll pick them up, and then the crew is safe, and then they'll start attacking us as well. Also, when they first come out, they will immediately spawn tokens when they're just in front of the ship. But if they have any surprise effects, those won't happen until you move into the area and then you pick them up. Now, if you move into the area, you have to pick up at least one, but you could pick up um, some or all of the ones that are there. So, that is a huge game changer because, for the first time, we are not completely dependent on luck as to see which monsters attack which player. They all come out here, and they're waiting very patiently, just trying to kill the crew, waiting for us to decide strategically which monsters it makes the most sense for us to fight. Because we're strong against monsters or weak against monsters, depending on what we've got in our deck. This is awesome, and it really adds a whole new level to the overall tactics of the game really enjoy this quite a bit. Now, if that weren't enough, that we, um, we're facing more bad guys than normal, but we have more control over the situation than normal, and effectively, we've got a buddy here with 15 extra hit points. Although, if you want to make the game slightly harder for yourself, you can flip it, and then there's only 10 crew and 10 hull damage that you can take before the ship sinks. But anyway, so, uh, you might think, well, hey, um, that, that sounds like it's going to be a lot easier, right? I mean, um, even with all these guys who are summoning tons of tokens and whatnot, it uh, shouldn't be a problem because we have total control over where they're appearing. But that's not all, folks, because in addition to all these different encounters attacking the different sections of the ship, there's an enemy pirate ship. Dun dun dun! Uh, the rules just say to use the normal adventure environment card. Although you don't have to, you could use anything. You could just even just leave these over here to represent there is an enemy pirate ship attacking the sword mistress. And uh, it starts out with 10 hit points. And this thing will rip the ship apart. The enemies, if we don't uh, take them on for ourselves, they'll start hitting the crew. The enemy pirate ship will attack our ship directly. Basically, what happens at the beginning of every round, right before you reveal a new Dragonfire card, the enemies will hit the crew and the, the pirate ship will shoot at the, uh, our ship. And the amount of damage the pirate ship does to our, to our hull is based on how much damage the pirate ship is taking. The, the pirate ship right at the beginning is doing four points of damage at the beginning of every round, right before the Dragonfire phase, and so on. So, that is pretty scary, but we have a way to fight back. If we are standing on the port or starboard, these white areas, these, the bridge areas, we have access to the ballista. Oh yeah, baby, we can open fire. On your turn, if you're standing here, instead of playing cards from your hand, you do not play cards at all to attack whoever's in front of you or wherever you might want to attack. You keep all your cards in hand and instead do two skill checks. Uh, for each skill check you succeed at, you do one point of damage to the enemy pirate ship. And as it gets weaker and weaker, it will be hurting our ship less and less. But that's a tough choice. Am I spending time fighting the guys who are trying to kill the crew? Or am I spending time doing skill checks? 
projects, hoping for the best, trying to take out this enemy ship. Because um, to win this thing, we have to um, you know, beat all three scenes worth of bad guys, and we've got to sink the ship. Both of those things have to be accomplished. And of course, we'll lose the normal ways, or if the ship or the hull, the keel, get completely wiped out. And also, if all this weren't enough, when a scene ends, the uh, pirate ship heals by two every round. It's constantly rehealing itself. So if you're going to hit it, you have to hit it hard while also trying to um, deal with more and more bad guys keep coming out. Oh no, it's swashbucklers! They're attacking on the uh, on the starboard, the four starboard. Here they are over here. Who's going to run over here? Uh, be, or, or no, we can let the crew fight them because they're only doing one point damage. Not that big a deal. So. That's the, those are the basics. There's maybe a couple of little things I'm forgetting about. But overall, this is a very, very cool game changer. Um, like I said, it's probably the most complex adventure that I mean, certainly we've ever seen so far with all these extra considerations, but it gives you so much control. Uh, it adds so many tokens thrown your way. I mean, this is token central. But, you know, Jen and I, we've kind of felt like it, it feels pretty well balanced at the two-player count, unlike, uh, you know, say the, oh, what was it, the, the Wastes, the first adventure, which was really kind of unbalanced in terms of tokens. This one feels okay. And, uh, yeah, we've really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I, 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 you know, the, the sense of high seas adventure, um, you know, the being attacked, but more than anything else, more control. Being able to choose, just not being um, stuck with random whims, which monsters attack, that sense of control is electrifying, and it really adds a wonderful new sense to Dragonfire. And that, folks, is Sea of Swords. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye